you at. The anti-corruption mission within the Organization of American States says Honduras is blocking an investigation into high-level officials. The allegations come weeks into massive anti-graft demonstrations following the election of President Juan Orlando Sanchez in November. The OAS called for a new election in December after widespread irregularities. Anya Parnpil has more tonight. Despite little coverage in corporate media, anti-corruption protesters in Honduras have refused to back down. At least 35 people have been killed by state security forces since the November 26th election. Hundreds more have been injured. Among those most recently killed was a 60-year-old man who died of wounds he sustained when military forces fired on demonstrators over the weekend. What's more, now environmental activists, lawyers, and organizers in the country say they are being subject to a targeted campaign of intimidation. For example, The Guardian reports lawyer Martin Fernandez, who is spearheading a legal battle against a hydroelectric dam, has been forced to flee his home and is accompanied 24 hours a day by volunteers from the U.S. group Witness for Peace. He's not the only individual being targeted. The government has put out, has really started a campaign um, uh, attacking prominent leaders of the opposition, including, for example, Edwin Espinal, um, who was accused first with flyers um, that were supported by the government of terrorism and then arrested last week and is now being held incommunicado, uh, will likely be in jail for years unless something changes with the regime. Um, and he's somebody who's been persecuted since his then partner was murdered by military police in 2009 during the coup, has been tortured uh, numerous times, has been arrested over 20 times, um, really just harassed for being a community activist. The Organization of American States reported irregularities in the November vote, such as deliberate human intrusions in the computer system, intentional elimination of digital traces, pouches of votes open or lacking votes, recently printed ballots, and additional irregularities, saying the observations made it, quote, impossible to determine with the necessary certainty the winner. And while opposition leader Salvador Nasrallah conceded the disputed election in December, the people of Honduras have not relented in their struggle against systemic fraud and corruption. The response from the state has been to deploy thousands of security forces in the streets, including military personnel. Our tax dollars are paying for this repression and murder. Um, just in December, uh, in the height, at, you know, while this was going on, while people were being murdered daily by the military police and police, uh, U.S. Southcom Southern Command donated an extra $500,000 of, um, of equipment for the military to use in tracking people. Um, and. Uh, and we have not cut off aid to the police and military that we are training to carry out these atrocities. It's horrifying, and it's our dollars that are being spent on this. U.S. taxpayer dollars make this military crackdown, which has led to the deaths of dozens of people possible. So why is the mainstream American media ignoring protests in Honduras? In Washington, Anya Parampil, RT.